I will call the June 11th, 2019 meeting of the Traffic and Parking Advisory Board meeting to order. Good afternoon and welcome. The Traffic and Parking Advisory Board reviews items of interest regarding parking and traffic items. We are an advisory board and our favorable recommendations today will go before the Oshkosh Common Council. The council can either accept or reject any recommendation from this board. If you don't agree with our decision, you can discuss that item with any council member. If the board does not reckon, excuse me, recommend an item, a common council member may sponsor a new ordinance regarding that same item. All items do require two readings before the common council. The first reading will take place on Tuesday, June 25th at 6 p.m. and you will be allowed to speak on the item at that time, though the council will take no action. On Tuesday, July 9th at 6 p.m., the item will again be on the agenda for a second reading you will again be allowed to speak. The Common Council will take action on it, however, at that point. For this afternoon's meeting, I will read each agenda item, at which time, if you'd like to speak, please step to the podium and give your name and address. I do ask that you keep your comments pertinent to the agenda item. The item will then come back to this board for discussion and ultimate action. Please call the roll. Staple? Absent. Wanschneider? Here. Becker? Here. Christensen? Absent. Haas? Here. Special? Here. Sosinski? Here. First item on this afternoon's agenda is a prior, excuse me, approval of prior minutes. Move it. Second. Comments, questions? I have one correction. Mr. Special. Um, where uh, it says Miss uh, uh, Baderman, sorry. Kimber, Kim Baderman, it should be Kim Biederman, correct? So I'd like to uh, correct the spelling of the last name. B-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N-N. -E -E -N. Okay. Thank you. With that uh, correction being made, I will call the roll on approval of minutes. Watch Schneider. Yes. Becker. Aye. Oz. Aye. Kesha. Aye. Aye. Which brings us then to public comment. The board has adopted a public participation policy which provides 15 minutes for general public comment on a first come first serve basis. This period is for non-agenda related items, folks, so please be aware, but citizens must provide their name and address and may speak on matters related to traffic issues within the authority of this board. Statements should be addressed to the board members and not to city staff or other persons. Items that are on the agenda should be addressed at the time they are read and not during the period for public comment. <coughs> Statements are limited to three minutes and citizens may only provide comment once unless special permission is granted. Is there anyone wishing to avail themselves of the period for public comment? Seeing none, we will move to new business. First item, election of officers. It's that time of year again. Yeah, actually, I, I don't know that. I've realized this in the past, but I, I guess each uh, spring we're supposed to elect the chair and vice chair. Um, and according to our ordinance, we have to do that every year. Um, so. Being that as it's May, we need to elect a chair and vice chair. Anyone have any nominations? It's a bit self-serving for me to ask the question. <laughs> but I, uh, anyone else is certainly say to keep to the nominations the same as the current. Formal motion there, Mr. Sisinski. Yeah. Second. Anyone choose to throw in their two cents? Then I will call uh, call the roll on elections of officers as stipulated by Mr. Szynski. So that would be um, Mr. Becker is currently the chair and Mr. Haas is the vice chair. Correct. So that would right. be the motion to just to clarify it. They stay as chair and vice chair. Schneider. Aye. Becker. Aye. Haas. Aye. Eschel. Aye. 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 Which brings us to item two, a request for an alternate board member or members. Yeah, this is uh, something that the new mayor was interested in is um, that we ask each of the boards and commissions if um, 
the board is interested in having alternate members and the role of alternate members would be if they're appointed would be to fill in when board members are are absent and that would ensure a quorum at all meetings generally you know this board with seven members we haven't had a huge issue with quorums but i know some have and um, it is a way too if there are more people interested than there are seats on the board that they can you know get their feet wet or get um, some familiarity with the board um, i haven't had in in the past you know that i'm aware of we haven't had an abundance of um, applicants however if, if there were more um, you know that's something we could consider so that's uh, what the request is so it's from my understanding it's also being able to fill those absent seats like tonight we have we have two people that were absent right. uh, so it's not just a quorum issue it's a, if there's absent if there's absent persons we could then call on the alternate to to sit in those spots yep. so it allows for the total amount of conversation and <coughs> possible communication about about what's on the agenda question for you mr peschel have you had this conversation with lady with, mayor with the mayor yeah yes. i was i was part of the conversation okay uh, my question then is is this an all or nothing proposition meaning if two or three boards choose to move forward is it going to be entire sure. citywide or that's it that hasn't um that notion hasn't been um, fully communicated right now uh, what it was it was put out to all the boards to communicate kind of get their temperature on how they <laughs> feel about about making such a an addition to this and I, I had that conversation with the mayor as well but I neglected to ask the question sure. about whether it was an all-or-nothing proposition my uh, my concern in tonight's the perfect example um, hypothetically uh, the uh, agenda three is carried over from the last meeting as we all know. And there's a fair number of people here who I'm assuming are gonna to speak to Agenda 3. For the sake of argument, if one of those alternate board members was incommunicado out of the country, again, I realize it's a, a tenuous uh, metaphor, but is it uh, in our best interest to let them vote on an issue that they have no background on? It's a rare occurrence. Um, it, but could quite potentially be a bigger issue on planning commission sure. and some of the other uh, more financially significant boards and commissions. Just a small reservation I have with that issue. I think I think the intention is that uh, if if you know the, if they go ahead with alternates for the boards, um, is that those alternates would be uh, just as educated and knowledgeable about the issue at hand as the person who would be you know, duly appointed at and, that time. So. And, I, and I get that, and in a perfect world, that's the way it works, but there's always the possibility sure. that they walk in somewhat uninformed. And again, as I said, in certain circumstances, that's not gonna be a big issue, but sometimes when contentious issues sure. are on the table, they could be problematic. My two cents. Again, sure. I don't know if anyone else has a comment to throw onto the table for discussion. So my understanding is the mayor is just looking for a thumbs up or a thumbs down on whether this board thinks it's a good idea right. or not. Yep. Recommendation, yep. yep. So, I mean, consensus, you know, around that, mm -hmm. a general idea. I think I made my, uh, my position clear. <clears throat> Anyone else? I, mean. I think the best thing is that it would generate more interest in the being on the board as as a whole. I, I don't um, disagree with that, but it comes at a cost. Yeah, true. Although anybody at the first meeting would have somewhat of that. Problem. True, but again, I think if there's some qualifiers put into the process, um, attendance at two or three meetings before they. Uh, So I, I don't know if we're looking for a vote on. I that's I why I so. kind of left it hanging there. So, um, I think what's what might be interested is just for the meetings meeting the minutes to kind of read that in general the board didn't necessarily have a have a concern with adding alternates. Um, and generally found it beneficial, but that there were some outlying issues 
that, that Mr. Becker had. So, and that's just in regards to um, all those alternates being up to speed. I don't know how we want to put that in the minutes. I, I, I guess I, I want to document what you sure, said. Sure, sure, and minutes. I appreciate that. Um, so I again. think that's important to be in the record. So, And I, uh, I don't have any problem with that, although I want to make sure that Mr. Wanschneider and Mr. Sosinski don't have um, questions, comments, concerns. Nothing from you, Dan? Ross? No, I, I okay. Then, uh, again, if you would yeah. kindly make sure the minutes reflect mm -hmm. that. Thank you. Which then brings us to Agenda 3, a request for bike lanes and possible removal of parking on Oakwood Road from 9th Ave to 20th Ave. Current condition being no parking both sides from 20th Avenue to 9th Avenue, 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. on weekdays, except on New Year's Day, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Christmas Day. All right. Well, this is this item was laid over from, from last month. Um, so just to, to kind of recap, um, currently Oakwood Road from 20th um, to 9th, it's a 48 feet wide road with, as, uh, as you stated, no parking, basically nights and we, I guess, um, no parking during the day, parking's allowed, nights, weekends, holidays. Um, so it's currently striped as a two lane road with, with as I mentioned, with parking allowed on nights, weekends, and holidays. Um, so this uh, stretch of road is in the bike and pedestrian plan um, and as a result of this, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee has identified this as a, um, a priority route for, that, for the bike lanes to be added this year. So look at, looking at that, then we um, did some research and there's basically what I came up with is there, there's four alternatives. Um, the, the current alternative is status quo, um, which is similar to, to this, but it's only striped as two lanes and then parking allowed on nights and weekends. Um, alternative option one here would be to stripe it as a four-lane road, which would be um, four 12-foot lanes. Um, alternative uh, th option two would be do, to do a road diet where you'd have a center left turn lane, um, a travel lane in each direction, then you'd have a five-foot bike lane, and that would remove parking because the road would not be wide enough to, uh, to accommodate parking at that point. Um, or option three, which is what um, we're currently recommending, would be to allow parking, then have, which would be eight feet, then have a five foot bike lane, and then have an 11 foot travel lane in each direction. Um, so we, we looked at the, uh, the average traffic count out there is about 5,200 vehicles per day. Um, for comparison, you know, on some of the roads we've done road diets like Murdoch, is about 9,500. Um, Ninth Avenue, east of Ryko is 12,200, and then it, it drops down as you go east. Um, east Irving Avenue is about 4,900. Um, so that gives you some ideas where we put bike lanes recently and how the tra traffic volumes compare. Um, you know, based on 5,200 cars a day, we can get by with one lane of travel in each direction would be um, sufficient. Um, at the last meeting, one of the concerns was left turning vehicles. So I actually went out there and did some left turn counts during the peak hours. Um, also kind of did some observations the rest of the day, but really the peak hours out there are, are before and after school and work. Um, so after, after Traeger let, let out there, um, that's when there were a few more left turning vehicles. I looked at the North Oakwood and Rushfield Drive. Um, most of the parents, that or most of the vehicles that were coming into that neighborhood turning left were coming from Traeger to um, after school after they picked their kids up. So there were about 36 in, in that hour. Um, and there didn't appear to be very many delays with the stop sign at 9th and Oakwood, you know, it, it tends to create some gaps in traffic. Um, and then I also looked at uh, the Newport Avenue and there, there, there were very minimal left-turning vehicles. Um, there are about 12 going west and 16 going east, and that's again during the peak afternoon hour. Um, and then there's also the school crossing at Oakwood and Newport, um, and that tended to significantly slow traffic before and after school. Um, then I also went out there and looked at the peak morning hour, and there, there were very minimal left-turning vehicles. I mean, 
there was a few vehicles coming back into the Rougefield neighborhood um, after dropping their kids off, but not very many. Um, so just kind of observing the traffic patterns over a few days during the peaks, um, there really weren't enough left turning where I th would feel that a left turn lane would be justified. Um, you know, and generally dedicated left turn lanes are, are generally um, at more like arterial roads, traffic sig signalized intersections, stuff like that. It'd be kind of unusual to have them on, on a stretch of road like this. However, if left turning vehicles were really a concern, uh, a road diet or something like that would make sense. Um, so th that's an option, but there really wasn't enough volume or left turning vehicles to justify having a dedicated left turn lane at those intersections. Um, so the other thing I thought of is, you know, with the left turning vehicles, technically that's a two lane road now. So if we did something with the bike lanes, it theoretically wouldn't be any different than it is now. Cause the only way you can get around a left turning vehicle now is if you go in the, basically the parking lane, which, um, you know, which when there's not cars parked there, you can do, uh, you know, it's technically probably not legal, although. Um, I don't know that you would get pulled over for that. Um, but anyway, that's, that's what I looked at um, after the last meeting to address some of those concerns. Um, so that brings us back to where we're at. You know, we have basically four alternatives. Um, I was recommending the option three, which would, would leave parking. Um, and then I think it would better organize the traffic there. And it would also follow the uh, the council approved bike and pedestrian plan. Um, and I know that at the last meeting we, we've had a change in council reps, but that was, I, I, know, I know that with the concerns we had regarding parking, like on West Haven, um, that if we were to remove parking, that might be more of an issue. In this case, I think we could accommodate the bike lanes, the parking and the travel um, and still keep traffic moving pretty well. So from, from my standpoint, that was what I would recommend. Would that uh, be unrestricted parking or uh, as it currently stands? Yeah, that, I thought about that too. Um, if we were gonna do that, we probably could remove the restriction because there would be a painted white line there mm -hmm. for the bike lanes. Um, so we probably wouldn't have to restrict the parking on nights, um, or during the day, I should say, is when it's currently restricted. We could probably allow parking there because there would be that bike lane separating the, the parked vehicles from the travel lane. What's the um, what's the magic number that I, that you have to get to in order to have the left turn lane? So, I mean, is is there is there a certain number that you average number that you that there's, you look for or there's there's not really. A, hard and fast number but um from a traffic engineering standpoint it usually it's usually like in the hundreds per okay. hour um and then and then in addition to that then you have to use your engineering judgment but sure and is there is there any left turn like in number in number two is there any intersections like that where we have something that that, that meet, meets that peak uh, on this current stretch, are you, you mean where oh, we need just in general, just oh. in general in the city, just just to give a comparison, sure. of the difference of yeah. So option volume. two would be um, Ninth Avenue uh, okay. from Reichow to um, Knapp, and sure. then Murdoch from Algoma to okay. Wisconsin. Both have uh, basically what would be a road diet, which is in option two. Okay. So Although they. The difference being that um, they don't have dedicated bike lanes, they just have painted shoulders. Okay. So like Murdoch has a four foot painted shoulder, it's not a dedicated bike lane, but the rest of the road would be similar to option two. Okay. Um, Sawyer Street would be a good example of option two where they, we have um, some parking bike lanes and then a center turn lane. Okay. This would be the opportunity for public comment on agenda three. Again, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Diane Steinert. Um, I live at 1560 South Oakwood Broad 
And I'm just here today to state my opposition to losing any parking on Oakwood. Um, there's limited parking. We, I live in a condo section, and I notice farther towards the uh, south, towards 20th, uh, most of the single family homes have very limited parking since the road was widened back in 2002. And uh, also opposed because of um, just the last few weeks with graduation and parties and different things, there was quite a bit of parking on Oakwood Road. So I'm just here to state my opposition to losing any parking. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Erin Parker. I live at 1730 South Oakwood Road. Um, I wanted to kind of agree about um, not wanting to lose any parking. I like the idea of doing your option three with uh, parking the bike lanes and the travel lanes. Um, I really would like to oppose the first option with four travel lanes. I just think with it being a residential area, there's a lot of kids around. It just seems like it would make it more dangerous for kids crossing the street um, when there's not a crossing guard there, which is a lot of the time. So that's really my opinion. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Gail Miller. I live at 1735 South Oakwood Road. I also am in uh, opposition to losing any additional parking. Uh, I think I probably have the house with the shortest driveway, um, even kissing up bumper to bumper. Uh, we cannot park two vehicles deep uh, without encroaching on the sidewalk. Um, as Diane stated, you know, you're talking about a negative impact to that, that neighborhood. Uh, you know, no, no baby showers right? No bridal showers, no confirmation celebrations, graduations. Um, Jim, I know you spoke a bit about the number of vehicles, you know, that, that travel that route. Um, over the last two weeks, I was trying to pay, pay very close attention to how many actual bikes are on that road. And I was going from Highway 21 out to 20th Street and over the course of two weeks, I saw about five bikes. Now, you know, this is at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, and from about 2 p.m. in the afternoon till 7 at night, and I just don't see the need. I, I don't know what the push is for the bike lanes. I'm not opposed to that kind of travel. I think it's great, but I, I guess I don't know what's what is pushing for all these bike lanes in the city when I really don't think we have the need for it um, if it's just something we think is a great idea that's that's great as well but um, I would like to see the restrictions move completely for parking on Oakwood um, so if we can we can do both that would be great thank you Jim Grover, 1650 South Oakwood Road. I own a home. My son lives there. On busy traffic, when you're getting cars coming out of the factories and that, I'm coming down there when you got it set up now where the people do utilize the right lane and they keep it up. We now have gaps in traffic where you can, I can, coming south, I can make a turn and go into my driveway after I wait for a couple of cars. But if you sit there and put that down to two lane, and during that period of time, I'm going to have a backup going north because I will not be able to make that turn. There will be too much traffic stuck in one lane. And I sit there and I look at it and I say, the only people I see riding bikes down there are kids. And do any one of those traffic, I want my kids to be riding in a bike lane. Now you do allow it on sidewalks. That's the safest place for them. That is not safe for you to be putting those kids out on that doggone tr uh, bike lane at all. And I'd hate to be the one who voted for it and then had some kid killed. And so, like I say, I know that's a bad, it's a bad thing. I, uh, bikes 
She counted it. I don't know. I said I'd know more than five bikes a day, and they were kids. That wasn't even a day. Right. I sat there and I look at it. There's nothing but children riding. And they're not safe riding out there. Not at all. And the sidewalk is safer. It keeps them way far away from the traffic. And if you say the people can tell them don't ride in there and ride on the side sidewalk, how often do your kids follow everything that you say? Think of that. That's basically what I can say. I think I the most closest one I could see is the number three, but then you better not have it so kids are restricted from riding on it. Because it's the most unsafe thing I could see. The other thing I can see is tree peak traffic time of people trying to get into their driveways coming south and having to make a left turn in, against all that traffic. Now my son backs his van in so he is safe coming out. How much is he going to hold up traffic backing that van in? He backs his car in too. And I sit there and I look at that and I say, that takes extra time. But you can do it when they got breaks in traffic. You're not going to have that big a break in traffic if you go and put that down to two lane and don't allow anybody to use that right lane. Something to think about. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, and actually, and um, I, I know at the last meeting there was a question about the town of Algoma's plans. So we got Ben's here to speak about that. Hey, good afternoon. Benjamin Krummenauer from 15 North Oakwood Road. I'm the administrator for the town of Algoma. Obviously, your, your north side and west side neighbor on this project here. I, I want to state, first of all, that I'm not going to be providing input on this discussion for the recommendation on this section between 9th and 20th. I merely want to provide some context on what the town of Algoma is trying to do with our regional plans. Uh, first of all, we, we think it's very important to be a cohesive network, that we don't think individually anymore. We think from a regional standpoint. The importance of seeing connections from how to get from Nino or Lake Butamore south. Uh, our town hall is located on Oakwood Road, a, a portion of roadway that was redeveloped into a four-lane road. Pretty quickly, the town realized that that wasn't the right approach and bumped that four-lane road back down to two lanes with uh, approximately 10 to 12 foot wide shoulders that are treated as pedestrian facilities. Uh, additionally, the town of Algoma has taken a stance of while we support bicycle and pedestrian accommodations, the town wants to address it more so from a, a multi-use, shared-use pathway standpoint. We don't have the luxury of the sidewalks in the community like Oshkosh has or even the wider curb and guttered roads. We, we pride ourselves on a rural cross-section and as such, accommodations can be a little difficult to see on the road. But nonetheless, in the Oakwood Road portion from Witzel or County Road E north to 21, the town board did see the importance of limiting that down because there wasn't the opportunity for residents to walk safely on a, a four-lane road in that area, consistent with the traffic counts on the rest of Oakwood Road. In fact, some of the higher traffic volume counts do appear to be north of 9th Avenue, some of that from the hospital. With respect to the bicycle counts portion of it, we actually are seeing an increase in bicycle usage on our road systems. We've got the luxury of viewing some heat maps and some other data that shows that Oakwood Road and Amro and some of our larger roads are seeing an impact from these. And as such, and we are taking the approach of any road that's getting reconstructed does get rebuilt with accommodations, uh, sidewalks and bicycle lanes if necessary or preferred trails when needed. Additionally, I just want to state that on this map here shows where our network is. We do see Oakwood Road as an important route for the town of Algoma residents and also how it connects with the region. We do have shared jurisdiction between 9th Avenue and Witzel or County Road E where the city and the town do collide about halfway down that stretch. No matter what happens with our portion, we want to make sure it stays consistent with your portion. So if any further recommendation comes north, we appreciate the opportunity to work with Oshkosh and make sure that that system works right. We are very comfortable. We approached the city in the past about look, looking at this roadway for any additional enhancements as we were looking at changing our striping pattern for some of our roads. 
Uh, that discussion hasn't come forward yet because the desire wasn't there for north of 9th. But again, as those pieces come through, we'd like to see those happen. And the last thing I want to just mention here for you today is that, you know, remember that within the town of Algoma, we pride ourselves on connections. And not all of them are obvious. Sometimes it's, it's easy things from one intersection to another. Other times, accommodations might need to stop halfway because that's where the pedestrian accommodation or the park stops. Those are important things that we try to think about, and it, it's obvious that you guys are thinking of the same. With that, I'll, I'll certainly take any questions you have on the town's process. Otherwise, we are taking a pretty strong stance on seeing these enhancements happen in our community when they're needed. Bicycle counts are up, usability's up, networks are up, four lane roads in the town of Algoma aren't gonna happen. Thank you. Do you have an annexation agreement with the city? Uh, yes, we, we do have a boundary agreement with the city. Uh, currently right now, everything that's on Oakwood Road is set. It's not to change. There's an expiration date to that document though. How did you get away from the requirement from the, uh, the government that that was supposed to be a four lane road because of the hospitals? Uh, if the council or the board would like me to answer that, I'll have to Absolutely, happily because I was gonna ask it too. Okay, <laughs> when that road was reconstructed, the state of Wisconsin required that bicycle and pedestrian accommodation be included on all roadways. And in this case, that stretch of roadway does not have a hospital on there. So the jurisdiction in that regard is different. Additionally, we were one of the last ones to have the requirement lifted for those roadways and the town still found the need to put them back in. So while I can't speak directly on the statutes, I can say that there is no hospital on that stretch of roadway. So there not is no requirement there. Roadway, yes. Correct. The next section you do. The next section isn't in the town of Algoma. I can't speak that's for the town the of city. Algoma. And that's why they have left it open. Well, thank you. If you guys need anything, I'll be in the hall at the end. Hi, good afternoon. Kim Biederman with East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. We are based at 400 Annap Street in Menasha. I just wanted to provide some additional context. Um, I cannot speak to any of the specific alternatives provided by the municipality because we usually do defer to the municipality's expertise and recommendations um, because they know their community the best. East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission in 2014 adopted an urbanized bicycle and pedestrian plan, which encompasses Calumet, Outagamie, and Winnebago counties. What this looked at was the regional connectivity and how do we move people places beyond just vehicles. So how do we move them through biking and walking and looking at transit. When we did these plans, we looked at what other municipalities had recommended. We looked at traffic counts. We looked at various studies to determine where are some of the best routes for the regional connectivity. With that said, one of the regional connections that we did identify is the portions of Oakwood. And this was largely because of the recommendations from the city of Oshkosh's bicycle and pedestrian plan, and then also the town of Algoma's recommendations in their comprehensive plan. When we look at bicycle and pedestrian planning, we look at standards. These standards are based on national standards, which include looking at average daily traffic, which look at traffic and uh, commute patterns from bicyclists, pedestrians, and vehicles. And then we look at the cohesive picture. So looking at Oakwood Avenue, for a bicycle lane, oftentimes we'll look at, are there more than 3,000 vehicles a day? That's not necessarily the threshold that every municipality sets, that's a national standard. So Oakwood has an excess of 3,000 cars a day according to Wisconsin DOT counts. We look at, are bicyclists using these roads? As Mr. Kramenauer pointed out before, and as heat maps indicate, certainly bicyclists are using this. Looking at a heat map, which pulls out red as being some of the heavier used routes, Oakwood is red, um, significantly more red than some of the surrounding roadways. Uh, this could be, I can't speak for the bicyclists, but it might be the most direct route for they want to go. And that's what we want to make sure that we're accommodating is can we move people safely, conveniently, and in one of the quickest modes possible. Everybody likes to go a straight line, point A to point B. When we start building these accommodations, you look at Oakwood right now, it is built for much faster of a speed than cars are allowed to travel. Once you start narrowing down those lanes, it makes the street safer. It starts slowing down traffic speeds. It makes it less confusing for drivers because now there's dedicated lanes. 
It's also safer for the bicyclists using it because they have a dedicated lane and vehicles know because it's posted, this is where bicycles travel. It minimizes confusion and those conflicts between bicyclists and pedestrians. In terms of users, youth certainly, they do not have that balance or coordination yet to be biking on the roadway. This is something that they can work with with an adult, parent, or guardian. But we oftentimes encourage, especially the littlest of children, bike on the sidewalks. They're oftentimes slower, but we do tell them, when you go down and you pass a driveway, every driveway is a point of conflict. That means they should be treating that like a pedestrian and like an intersection. So every time you're passing a driveway, you should be slowing down and looking. I was biking with my friend's daughter the other day. She's zipping down the sidewalk. It made my heart drop a little, <laughs> thinking, every time she passes there could be a car backing out and they're not looking for somebody traveling at that rate of speed. Once you get older, about middle school age, they start having coordination, they start having those skills. We were just out with middle schoolers and Nina teaching them how to bike safely on the street. If you visualize when you drive where your points of reference are and what you're looking at, you're looking at the street, you're not necessarily looking at, at the sidewalk. So. As your skill level sets up, we start telling people start moving to the road because you're going to be going faster. You're going to be more predictable. Vehicles are going to be looking for you on the street. Like I said, that does not apply to the smallest of children. We want them to be safe. And at that level, oftentimes the sidewalk is the safest place until they build that coordination. So with that said, that's what we look at when we do bicycle and pedestrian planning and we create some of these routes. We cannot speak to what is the best recommendation or the best alternative, but what we can speak to is making streets safer for everyone. And with that, I'll be out there, so if you have any questions specific for me, you can feel free to ask that as well. Thank you. Thank you. James Gover, 1650 South Oak Road Road. I'm a retired state trooper. I enforce the laws. And, and I sat there and I watched all the people on bicycles that are running through stop signs without stopping, driving through red lights without stopping, and they're gonna learn from kids and that and drive on the road? I mean, to tell you, it's safe. The thing that bothered me the most is why don't the police enforce it? The city's got it here. I sat there and I watched. I drive around here and watch all these people riding through it. I, I arrested one girl and boy, she said, boy, you can't arrest me. There's no law against it. No law against it. I said, you want to look at it in the book? No, there's no law against it. And she came to court and was found guilty as usual. But they didn't say that. But I sat there and looked at it. If, if I were working in the city, I could probably write 50 or 100 illegal acts done by bicyclists in this city. Driving through stop signs, driving through red lights, all this sort of stuff. I mean to tell you, you think it's going to be safe to put them in that street? As far as Oakwood Road, I use that road. I use that lane. I have a little electric cart that I run my dog with. And I have yet to see a bicyclist on it. I have yet to see one. And I've been here for over a year, two years. Now you sit there and tell me that, that studies are done. I, I, that uh, just uh, shocks me because I... And this, the numbers that you come up with just really wow me because that's not exactly what I'm seeing. So I'll tell you one thing. You put them in the streets. You go ahead and do it. But with all the, all the doggone violations that they do, Katie, by the door. Back to the board for comment and discussion. But before we do that, we need a second. A movement and a second, sorry. Move it. What are we moving? The, the agenda thing. three. I'll discuss it. I'll discuss so it. we can discuss. <clears throat> second. All right. Anyone have any comments, concerns? I don't want to be the first one out the door. So um, professional. My my preference is is an option number three. Um, I believe it conforms with the plans that our staff have embarked upon. Um, I know over the years that uh, it's not just uh, drivers 
that have indicated uh, some of these issues, but also the bicyclists and those bicyclist communities have indicated that having access to riding in the street uh, is, is a preference. Um, it actually makes me happy to see that we're actually suggesting this today because when I was on the council several years ago, we had to go through the process of actually creating the plan. And so now 10 years later, I'm seeing the plan being put into place. Um, and I think, um, I, I, I guess there's the one thing that I want to know is, is, is are we, Jim, and you might be able to answer this, are we mm -hmm. tracking how many people are, how many bicyclists are actually using those areas without the bike lanes? I mean, do we, do we count that number? Because from what I understand, a lot of uh, bicyclists do use Oakwood to go from one end of Oakwood all the way to the other end of Oakwood and to get into those uh, feeder streets in those neighborhoods and um, in and out of the city as well for those country rides as well. So Yeah, I, we don't have any data like that. All I would have is basically what, what Kim and Ben had okay. said, you know, there's heat maps that, that sure. are out there that indicate people are using it. But as far as the city goes, we don't have anything other than okay. that. Okay. Is that something um, that we as a city will begin to do once we start putting um, bike lanes on the highway or not on the highway on the on the city streets and stuff like that like we like we count cars and like we count turns and and all of that stuff it's something we certainly could do I don't know is Alexa just here? Um, I know you guys started doing some of that stuff Alexa could probably speak to it which they've been doing so far <clears throat> Hi, Lexa Najunas, Associate Planner. Um, so we do use the bike counter tools that Essential offers, so we have to request it from them, and they serve the whole county, so we can't just have access to them at any time. We do have some counts from past years, but we don't have any for Oakwood Road. Sure. So if it's something that is a desire to kind of have more of a consistent pattern on how to count them, like if we know we're going to try to implement one bike lane. We can try to make it consistent, do a count before, do a count after. Sure. But we don't have any kind of formulaic thing where we keep them consistent every time. It would be nice if we had our own counters, but we don't. Yeah, I think they, um, and I don't know, I guess it was essential that did the counts on like Sawyer and. Yeah, it's um, always through them because we don't yeah. have any through the city. So, so, so East Central, which is the Regional Planning Commission, has done counts. Um, as a city, we haven't done them specifically. We don't have the counters like they do, but um, sure. it's something I guess we could look into in the future. Yeah. yeah. Um, even with that said, I, I think we have a lot more people using bicyclists now, and I want to focus on the, the adult or the intermediate or the kind of expert riders, um, and that's, that's where the bike lanes are really important is because their place isn't on the isn't on the sidewalks, um, and I want to make that distinction. Um, is that uh, because it's it's important it's important to acknowledge uh, youth young youth using our sidewalks to bike. Um, I think I think I would agree that that's the place where we want them to be until they become comfortable uh, riding in in the allotted spots in the road. So, um, but I think that those those are those lanes are, are needed and I, I think I'd be in support of, of option number three because it provides the lanes it also provides more ample parking in the area if we do I mean if we wanted to put in without the restrictions during the day we'd have to make that change here today correct so yes we, we could we'd have that. to amend or, or add that to the to the suggestion and I'm not I'm not necessarily opposed to that because I don't I don't believe it offers that greater a burden to the neighborhood by doing that. The concern that I do have um, is um, the more cars that you put in that parking lane becomes then a challenge for those biking um, and having to be uh, more aware those parking are getting in and out of their parked cars and bikers coming through there and being aware of who's in those bike lanes when someone may be going to and from their parked vehicle. So there might be an increased awareness issue that that, that may arise with that. One so. thing I'd like to comment on that. You, you gotta be careful. I, I say, say number three looks about the best solution in some respects. But at nighttime, 
or even whatever, if the guy's parked in the parking lane, and all of a sudden he opens that door, and it goes out into the bike lane, and there's a bike coming by, you're going to have a little bit of a su real surprise when it happened to a person. <coughs> and in my years, there's only once it happened, but it happened. The person opened the door, the bike hit it, and the kid went flying right over the door handle, over the top of the door, and he looked over his shoulder and said, way to go to the driver, <laughs> and he hit the ground on the other side. I don't know how bad he is hurt, but that is something you've got to look at, too. Other board members with comments? Are, are you done, Mr. Yeah. Peschel? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, I agree with Mr. Peschel about option three with the parking restriction removed. Mr. Haas? I would, I would support that one also. Um, okay. Which then leaves me to uh, comment on option three, which I was going to do anyway. Um, state statute currently allows for bicyclists to use any stretch of roadway they so choose. They have full right to the width of a lane as they go down the road. Option three, in my opinion, the intention here, I'm assuming, is to, uh, to make their travels more safe. I would suggest, I would argue that option three, in fact, makes that less safe. Here's why. Entertain me for a second. You've got someone driving in the 11-foot traffic lane with a five-foot bike lane next to them with no parked cars, even though we're uh, going to allow for parking. For the sake of argument, there's no car there. That person in the 11-foot traffic lane wants to make a left. Where's the person behind them going to go? I know what the law. I know what the law says. I know what the lines tell people to do. But human behavior is a totally different thing. That's why officers stay employed. What's that person going to do? They're going to bounce to the right and go around the person making the left. What have they just cut through? The bike lane. We've made it less safe by putting a bike lane in, in that particular scenario. Not to mention the uh, being doored, as it's called, by a parked car. I've been in some cities where they put the bike lanes in the center of the road, you know, next to each other. That's fraught with all <laughs> kinds of problems, in my opinion, too, Mr. Szynski. So, again, my, uh, my opinion, um, status quo. Option four, I would prefer option one, but I do uh, feel some, uh, some responsibility to the folks that live on Oakwood Road to uh, leave some parking in place, even though it doesn't act as it should at this point because people do, in fact, use it as a four-lane road, but it's actually only a two-lane road. But I'm uh, opting for option four. If I may. Absolutely. Um, why not just remove the parking restrictions altogether? If uh, if we uh, were uh, if we looked at option one, that would be the choice. It would be far more uh, compliant with state statute if we actually striped it as two lanes in each direction. But to do that, we'd have to sacrifice parking on Oakwood Road. No, no, no striping. Just but, remove the parking restrictions. And we could uh, we could do that, but then. Arguably, people are still going to use it as a four-lane road. So it, it really, at this point, arguably, and uh, I look to uh, Lieutenant Harris potentially to, uh, to provide some insight to this, but it ex actually, at this point, is a one-lane road, but people use it as it's two in each direction. Like and that doesn't street. comport with state statute. So People do use it to pass. Again, which is and, not in compliance with state law. And even driving down the road. The information that doesn't say anything in the information telling you that it's only a two-lane road and you just don't park there. So there's nobody parking there during the week that people feel, well, you opened it up. It's wide enough. Might as well use it. Road. Mm -hmm. And then when they shut it down on the weekends and, and holidays, uh, nights and that, if for parking, then the people go ahead and use it. If you sit there and look at it, if you took parking away from the people out there, uh, so they live up, have their drive, their driveway so, so short because the house is up, right up with the front of the house. They don't have any parking. And if they have people over for whatever party or whatever, where are they going to put them? 
where are you going to put them? You going to drive all over the people's yards and park all over the grass and everything else? That's actually against city ordinance too, by the way. <laughs> Which actually, you know, regardless on your, you know, on opinions on bike lanes, I mean, the, from a traffic engineering standpoint, one of the reasons that I like things like option three is it does better organized traffic. It tells you where to park, parking lane, bike lane, travel lane. So, I mean, I think that's one of the benefits that comes when we stripe them. I've seen that in other stretches of the city when, like ninth for instance, now people are actually nowhere to drive. You know, we don't have bike lanes there, but that's a, an added benefit to striping that way. My, my personal opinion is leave it like it is. But if you have to do it, number three is the one that you're going to, going to do because you got enough input coming from the high mucky mucks in there that can control the common council and no vote for it anyway. But the point goes is if you go with number three, you better not have any children riding on that. And unfortunately, there's no way to restrict that. What? I mean, there's no way to restrict that. I know. That's, that's the problem. He, that's but then the other problem is a person could open the door on them, and, and you ride right into the door. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's bring this back to uh, a little more concise conversation. Um, every board member's had their opportunity. Um, I am looking for someone ostensibly to uh, make a recommendation and narrow this down from uh, four options to one so we can vote. I'd like to move option three with the amendment to remove the track tra uh, parking restrictions. Second. Can I ask a question on that? Absolutely, Mr. Peschel. Thank you. Um, so, Jim, so if we remove the, the parking restrictions on it, that makes it so that people can park there during the day? That's how I understand it? Correct. And then they would also in the even or in the on the overnight between two and five would also have to fluctuate their parking as well. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. You still wouldn't be able to park um, between two a.m. and five a.m. Um, okay. That's actually restricted throughout the city. There's no parking from two a.m. to five a.m. Um, unless uh, you get a permit from the police department, and that's there's only certain roads that they allow that on, or you call for temporary permission, and that's when the alternate, sure. the alternate comes into play um, when you have a permit, um, also when you call in for sure. and the permit, special permission. And you'd have to flip-flop on certain days. Then you would, yes. Okay. And so right now the permit, that, that stretch of Oakwood does not allow for a permit? No, it's generally by the university area. Um, okay. The, Lieutenant Harris can probably answer it more specifically. Or but. you can park on Oakwood. I believe we only restrict it. Like there's a, I know at the front desk, there's a, they count how many are going to be on, in the university area. Sure. And then in a little bit of the downtown area. That's like the restricted area. Okay. That you can get it anywhere else in the city, I believe. Okay. So you could, I guess, get a permit there if you wanted for over. Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, and we don't have an idea of how many people would park on Oakwood as well because we don't we don't allow for it currently at the moment other than nights and weekends and I I've actually I, I lived in that area for like 15 years so I can tell you I mean nights and weekends like like the citizens mentioned if there's a party or something sure. there'll be vehicles parked there but most of the time there's not unless somebody has yeah. a party or something yeah, I, I drive that area regularly as well and I don't see a lot of you know currently you know illegal parking on the street during the day so um, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to happen once we once we do this restriction because then it becomes legal for people to park within you know within those time frames so um, I guess my I'm, I'm okay with moving forward with with the way that the proposal is being put um, I guess I'd like to put into place uh, encouraging of, of kind of gauging what try or what parking is going to be like on that stretch of Oakwood, uh, you know, within, you know, maybe say the first six months of this going into effect, um, and just kind of just looking at it instead of, you know, seeing if there is any issue with parking in that area. I don't know, what's your thoughts on that, Jim? Yeah, I mean, we can, obviously, um, if we get any concerns, we can bring it back to the board. That's okay. usually, it would be if somebody okay. called with concerns. I mean, 
or if we notice something but obviously we're we can't monitor the parking on all the streets sure. but if if there was a concern then we'd obviously yeah, if, look if there at was it a concern yeah you'd send someone out and you'd you'd, right. you'd monitor it and look yep. at it. we'd okay. monitor from a traffic standpoint and then obviously we'd ask the police department if it was you know if there was something that they needed to look into okay um so i, I think number three is 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 our safest of our safest venture uh, in creating, um, accommodating, and creating uh, the need for uh, bikes on the road, because I think um, I think that's that's the trend. I think we're going to see more bikes on the road, um, and by state law, they are considered a vehicle, much along the lines of what Mr. Becker was stating. They have uh, just as much right to that full width of the road as a car does. So. Um, and again, um, I, th I think, I feel that number three makes uh, Oakwood safer for putting bikes, um, creating a lane for bikes on the road. So. What else wish to weigh in on the board before I call the roll? That's a good option, I believe, also because it, it, you keep the parking and that's uh, something we all have to live with in residential areas. More important, yeah, everybody just has to adjust. Uh, <coughs> it's a good option. Anyone else? So then the issue before us is option three. What's up? Amendment of parking. Correct, sorry. Correct. All right, that being understood, please call the roll. Von Schneider. Yes. Becker. No. Aye. 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 Which brings us to staff statements. I don't have any other than um, we talked a little bit. Um, I talked to Mr. Beck a little bit, but uh, on West Haven. So last last week we went and uh, restriped the road. Um, and you can see that obviously um, traffic paint is meant to be somewhat permanent. So once you paint it, it's very hard to remove. So with that, adding the parking there, um, the only way to really re remove traffic paint, there's a couple ways, but generally the most common way is called scarifying where you cut the top layer off. And then when you do that, it leaves behind a little bit of a groove and then the pavements obviously are different colors. Um, so did the best we could to remove that old line um, we've actually and then also that street is extremely curvy so it's really hard to get the lane the lines um, t like on a straight road we'd string a line and you can make a straight line but there obviously you can't so it kind of did the best they could we went I had them go out there and try to make it a little bit you know so it wasn't curved quite as bit as it was um, so they improved it a little bit um, but unfortunately that's until some of that uh, the center line and until that pavement starts fading and matching the rest of the roadway it's it's gonna be like Sawyer was for a couple years um, so that's that's the downside when you stripe it and then something changes um, so I just want to make you aware of that um, I think that's I noticed they scarified it all the way down to like Aurora and when it was supposed to end by, uh, I can't recall that street. Uh, it's it's to that. Patriot Lane. Yeah, yeah. But they um, did it a little further uh, north. I believe they only went to Patriot Lane. Yeah, I thought they did like the next block, you know, by uh, Aurora. No, so. oh. no, they stopped at Patriot. Yeah, because it actually opens up into two Four. painted mm -hmm. lanes. Yeah, then it goes to four lanes. Yeah, there. well, two in That's each direction, but yeah, yeah, right there in front of Aurora, that intersection. So that, and then the um, and the traffic tubes are currently out this week. The, the state's doing their traffic counts, so that's what those are. Are there any items for future agendas? I can I ask oh, a question? Mr. Peschel. How many about, I, I noticed those out today in a lot of different spots. So how many, how many of those tests are, or counts are being done across the city right now? That I don't know because it's it, basically the state hires a contractor to okay. do them and they just notify us that, hey, we're doing the traffic counts this week. Okay. I, I don't know exactly how many they have. They, I know they're doing the university area 
um, in downtown. Earlier this year, they did some of the other major roads. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure. They Every three years, though, they go and try to do the same spots every three years. Sure. So then you can actually go on the DOT's website and that you can get that data is on their website. Okay. All right. Thank you. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Looking for a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Have a good evening. Aye.